And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jason Horsch coming to you live from Xanadu Gallery. I'm here with Barney Davey, and we're launching another of our monthly hangouts. This month, we're talking about online galleries. Uh, today is Tuesday, March 11th. Uh, just, I always like to throw that in just so you know that we are here, we're live, um, and we're looking forward to this, this discussion. Um, how are you doing, Barney? Hey, Jason. Good to see you, as always. I'm doing great. Good to uh, good to be here with you, and I know that um, this is a topic that's of a lot of interest to um, our audiences. Uh, when I did my state of the art survey uh, earlier in the year, um, some of the questions were around online marketing and those kinds of things. Um, I didn't really dive into you know how well are you selling in online galleries, which ones are working for you, etc. Um, but I got a lot of feedback from artists asking me if in the next survey I could please ask some of those questions. And I think that a lot of artists, um, you know, either are getting their feet wet in online galleries or thinking about it or maybe they have some exposure there, haven't maybe seen the results they would have liked to. Um, so I, I'm uh, excited to talk about this this evening and I know that uh, our audience has a lot of questions and, and feedback about it as well. I'm looking forward to it myself. Because for the same reason, I think it is a, a topic of uh, great interest to our audience. I get a lot of questions about it anytime I write a blog post about it. It always gets well read with lots of comments. So it's right up there with your book, how to get into galleries. I think in terms of artists seeking ways to find new distribution channels for getting their art out in, into the world. Yeah, and you and I have discussed um, the world of online marketing before for artists. Um, we've touched on a variety of topics, and I think we've probably delved a little bit into to this subject matter, um, just kind of, uh, you know, almost as collateral discussion around those topics, but it'll be good to right. talk about this specifically. So, um, you know, maybe we should just dive right into the discussion and start by kind of laying out the the uh, landscape of of online galleries and and uh, I'll mention uh, you know a lot of times uh, these discussions are less formal and I, I think Barney you and I were talking about this is just going to be kind of us uh, laying out our understanding and talking about advice that we might give um, we're not going to be giving step one you should do this step two you should do that kind of information in this discussion but it's just going to be more of an informal um, uh, conversation around the the subject. So hopefully we can all get some value together. And I'm I'm looking forward to the uh, the feedback from from the artists who are in attendance. So um, the the landscape. Um, l let's just talk about first of all who are the the kind of the the big players that we know about in the uh, the online gallery market. What are some uh, What are some of the first ones you would list, Barney? Well, I, I guess just because of the um, name value, I I think of uh, Saatchi Online, but you know now. Um, everybody seems to be getting into the fray with the Google and Amazon and on the other end of the spectrum from Saatchi is a eBay where which is one of the first online really successful online art markets and they've had their ups and downs over the years I, I think they've come back from a, a low point that they had with artists at one point so um, you could go on and on there's if you get into print you know, on demand there's you know, Fine Art America or Zazzle or Redbubble or sites like um, Etsy. We could probably sure. just talk about on and on. Oh, oh and uh, let's not forget Xanadu Gallery's got a pretty nice presence online. Yeah, too. I'll, uh, don't worry, I won't let you forget that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd throw it in there, you know, for you. Um, you do a good job with it, so you uh, you have something valuable to to offer. Yeah, and I think that, um, you know, maybe some of the first considerations that an artist should give to online galleries are, are kind of um, maybe setting some some expectations and, and some goals of what you, what you want to accomplish and realizing that um, showing in online galleries is a way to increase your exposure, but it's going to be a... Um, you know, a little bit different than if you were to increase the number of weekend art shows and festivals you were participating in, or even the number of physical retail galleries that you're showing in. It's, um, you know, it's a little bit different game when you are, uh, in, in a lot of cases, these are galleries that uh, there's a pretty low, um, I don't want to say low bar of entry, um, but, but it's a pretty... Uh, pretty easy process to upload artwork to these sites, um, 
you know, sometimes the uh, an online gallery is willing to take a broader range of artists than maybe a physical gallery would, because simply because um, you know a physical gallery has hard fixed overhead costs um, and has to to focus in and and uh, you know kind of get artwork that they feel is going to give them the best opportunity to sell. Where an online gallery, sure, they want to sell as well, but uh, you, you know, it's it's hardly any more expensive to show a thousand online artists than it is to show one. So there's there's really a, a um, you know, it can be an easier way for an artist to start to get some exposure. I, I agree with you. There are some out there that are, are uh, juried. And, sure. you know, for, for a, a juried online gallery, that's a pretty tough ticket. You have to be fairly confident of your audience that you're, you're going to be able to pull in the right kind of buyers uh, to offset the fact that you're limiting who you're going to let show on on your site so um, there are just taking this point a little further besides just the difference of the physical galleries there are reasons to be in an online gallery that um, aren't all about sales it's you know it's great for your SEO for instance if you have links back to your site from online galleries it's just one other way to get your name out there. Or if you're, if you have a very common name, one that uh, um, Jane Robinson, John Smith, you know, Bill Jones, whatever. No offense to people with those kind of names, but there's a lot of the same names floating around. It's very hard to rank for your um, own name with SEO, and quite often you can do better at least getting some name recognition through some of these online galleries. So the other, there's reasons other than just purely trying to get sales out of it to be in an online gallery. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that's an excellent point. I think that's, um, you know, an artist who's looking for representation in an online gallery, you know, in terms of expectations, that should be one of the very first things that they're looking at is that I want to cast as wide a, a net as possible on the internet, um, you know, I want to reach out as far as possible so just having my own website sitting online, hoping that someone's going to stumble across it or, you know, maybe I'll be able to give it out to some people and they'll come to it. But by reaching out to online galleries that are already getting traffic, uh, you're increasing that exposure. And from that perspective, I think it makes a lot of sense, um, you know, for an artist to basically try and, and show in as many of the online galleries as, as possible. There's, um, you know, if you're going to cast a net, let's, let's cast it as wide as possible. And so, um, you know, as long as there's not any kind of extreme fee to, to show in the gallery or, or any kind of ongoing costs, you'll, of course, have your ongoing time that you'll be putting into maintaining it and keeping the inventory up to date. Um, but I would think it would make sense for an artist to devote you know, to budget out some time in their weekly schedule to say, I'm going to spend a half an hour or an hour or whatever it is, um, where I'm just going to be focused on pushing my images, my artwork out to a variety of galleries, and then start picking the galleries that you feel best fit your your um, kind of your objectives, and and then just be consistent. Um, you know, in our online gallery, I find that the artists I do best with are those ones who are kind of you know, they're not necessarily uploading tons of art all at once, but instead they're just kind of consistently coming on, updating their images, putting new work up. Um, and I think you'll find this to be the case across a lot of these galleries is that it's the newer inventory that tends to get more exposure. So from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense to, to kind of um, drip feed out your artwork onto these galleries and then rotate it. That's a good idea to rotate it. Everybody's always looking for what's new. Well, it may be old hat over on this gallery, but it's new on, on this other gallery. Um, it, it, I hadn't planned on mentioning this, but it, it came to mind as you were talking about it that this is the kind of task that would be perfect for a virtual assistant, in my opinion, because it doesn't, it's just, it's just task oriented. It's not something that's going to require somebody to make contact with anybody else or write sales copy. Not that virtual assistants can't do that. Some of them are very good at it, but this would be a great way to take advantage of some of the low-cost um, virtual assistant help that you can get. If you look on sites like Elance or Guru or Odesk, or just do a, instead of trying to write all those down, just do 
uh, a search for virtual assistants, you will find everything from some people who are working three or four dollars an hour in the Philippines up to you know twenty five dollars an hour here in the U.S. doing very high caliber of virtual assistant work. But if you don't have the time or it just bores you to death thinking about doing it, that would be another avenue to explore as a way to get some of these tasks that aren't worth a lot of money to you to do on your when your own. If you could be, use that same amount of time to create another work of art, that you're going to be far better off in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's another uh, another great suggestion. So, uh, yeah, um, in in essence, then uh, maybe we should go and and talk about um, some of the uh, pros and cons of each of the uh, the galleries that that you mentioned. Okay. Yeah, well, the, 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 you know, the, there's things like you need to, you need sort of a game plan. You really do, before you could hire a virtual assistant or get anybody else to do it, you need to do the research on your own to find out what you, what, go visit these sites and get a, um, a good feel for, is this someplace that I think is suitable for my art, for, for my art? And then you need to also look at things like, is the site juried or not? Do I want to spend the time trying to get into a juried site? Maybe it is worthwhile. Um, and are there costs associated with it? What kind of benefits does the um, the online gallery provide you? Some of them are very bare bones. It's just a place to hang your art. Maybe they'll process a transaction for you for a fee, but you're you're basically not getting anything from them in terms of the, the, your arts on the site. You have some links back to your own website and they'll process the sale for you. So research is, I, I think, the first thing to look at. And then as far as ups ups and downs, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I look at them necessarily in that way. Uh, maybe, you know, is your art right on eBay? Would you feel uncomfortable? selling your art on eBay, or could you be somebody like Michelle Keck, who claims to have made over a million dollars selling art on eBay, doing her abstract um, originals and, and uh, prints, so yeah, no easy I, answers there. There aren't, and I think it's, um, you know, it's interesting, and it would be a good idea to do some... Uh, some due diligence on the the sites and spend some time. Uh, for instance, a few years ago, I was was watching what was happening on eBay. I mean, this was probably seven or eight years ago, um, because I thought, sure, that you know, here's some potential for another venue for selling art. And um, you know, I even thought about listing some of the work we have in the gallery on eBay. But as I spent some time um, over the course of several weeks watching artwork. Um, you know, go up for auction and sell. I found right away that the price points that the work was selling at on eBay were just too low for uh, you know what I need to do with my gallery and and the artists that I'm representing. And so I could see right off the bat that uh, eBay wasn't going to be a good a good fit for us. And you might find the same thing, or you may find you know what my price points are right in line with the work that's that's currently selling in in this particular venue. Maybe it will be a good a uh, good venue for me. A great point. Um, knowing what your the value of your art, and talking about pricing, one of the things that I would recommend if you're going to be in a lot of different places is that you keep your pricing consistent. It's you'll drive yourself crazy, and your collectors if you are have a lower price for the same or similar art um, on two different sites. I suppose that's another point. If you're going to have a lot of inventory and you're spread out around 20 galleries, you need some kind of spreadsheet or something that helps you keep track of what you're doing so that you don't end up with a lot of um, work that's no longer available, disappointing potential collectors um, by promoting things that they can't get their hands on. I'll throw a uh, counterpoint up to that one, um, and I'm speaking from experience here. Um, our online gallery uh, has a broad range of artists and artists who've uploaded recently, some who haven't uploaded for a little while. And and at first, when we launched the online gallery, I was really concerned about that issue. Um, you know, the the availability of work. 
um, and making sure everything was kept up to date. And so I, I came up with a pretty elaborate scheme that required, you know, every uh, six weeks or so an artist would need to come on and verify that everything was still available, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that ended up being a, a, uh, a real uh, just kind of logistical challenge for us. And I ended up finding out that um, it didn't really... It, it wasn't a detriment if a client came to our website and saw a piece there, fell in love with it and said, I might want to buy this, and then contacted us either through the website or bought the piece on our website or called us or whatever. Um, and we ended up finding out, oh, you know what, sorry, this piece is, is actually sold. Um, rather than having disappointed customers, what has happened time and time again is that I had the, the client say, oh, well, would it be possible for the artist to create something similar for me? Um, or are there any other pieces in the artist's inventory that are, are still available and, and like that piece? And we've made, um, you know, like I say, a number of sales. Um, even just recently, we've made a couple of sales that, that were that kind of scenario. So, um, you know, it's it. I, we're still so early in the age of uh, marketing art on the internet that uh, I think there's still a lot of experimentation going on and we're still learning um, what works and what doesn't work. Um, so yeah. it's it, it's a lot of fun. I like that idea. It's the uh, it's the equivalent of the red dot to some extent. It, oh, that art is sold, therefore it must be popular. I have good taste and maybe I should look at something else that I, I could find that this artist has done that would make me just as happy or even happier to own. So. Yeah, exactly. And um, we've, as our site has evolved, we've kind of gone to exactly what you're talking about there, where now artists can update. We, we don't pull something off just because it's sold. If they mark it sold, it shows up with a red dot. Um, you know, we've tried to tie that in. We have our, our uh, Art Sala inventory system that ties into our website so that as those artists update their inventory, it automatically updates as sold on our website. So, you know, like I say, it's just all a, uh, a learning process and, and kind of uh, figuring out and experimenting to find what, what works best for everyone. And, you know, that kind of brings us to the, the – we haven't really touched on this exactly, and that is that um, going back to the, the concept of expectations is that you realize that, okay, you know, if I were to sell in Jason's physical gallery, I am one of – 30 artists who are showing in that physical space. Um, but if I'm showing in, in Xanadu Gallery's online gallery, I'm one of several thousand artists. Um, you know, it, uh, I, I sometimes get artists who will email me and say, you know, I haven't sold anything in the online gallery, and I have to say, well, what I have found is that it's, it's kind of this process of the net that you're casting. Um, where you may not sell anything for some time on our website, and, and we found that on average, pieces that are selling from our website have probably been there for 8 to 15 months before they sell. That, that's kind of a, you know, it's not necessarily that the newest stuff sells right away, but uh, it, it, it's just kind of um, that whole thing of, of setting your expectations correctly and, and um, just realizing that it becomes a little bit of a numbers game when you're doing anything online. Um, especially in an online gallery or trying to get people to, to come to your website. Um, this makes me uh, wonder about your, your, um, the artists who are on your site. It, something I feel like artists need to do is probably, uh, in spite of maybe casting a wide net, they need to focus on one or two or maybe three at the most galleries that are really going to, they feel, produce the best for them. And on, I also think that artists then need to spend time promoting their art to drive traffic to those sites, either through their blog, through email marketing, through maybe even uh, Facebook uh, promotions on Facebook, or whatever they can do to get traffic to that site. I just don't think... I, I believe some artists have the uh, mistaken impression that by just virtually putting their art online that the that the online site, the management of the online site, is just going to take care of them. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I do agree in in principle with what you're saying. I mean, really, it makes sense to to just be as active as possible in in promotion in every way. Yes, putting blog posts out and social media posts out, um, driving traffic to your various sites. 
Um, but that said, I we're making sales all the time on our website for um, for artists who didn't drive the traffic there. Um, you know, we have the advantage, and I think this is the advantage of many of these galleries, is that on your own personal website, you'd probably be thrilled if you had you know, 10, 20 visitors a day or 100 visitors a day would be amazing. Right. Um, my gallery website, I'm getting tens of thousands of visitors a day. Now, obviously, not all of those are qualified buyers. Some of those are just people stumbling through the Internet, um, coming across cr across our website. But just by virtue of the volume of that traffic, um, we're able to, to hopefully drive you know, kind of drive traffic towards artists' work and towards their websites. And, um, you, you know, even though we've got a large number of artists showing on our website, the more traffic we get, the more artists we get, it just starts to build a real synergy where you start to see more and more activity. And we've certainly seen that. Uh, my online gallery is uh, going on five years old now, and, you know, I can just kind of watch the steady climb of our daily traffic over those five years as we've built synergy um, with, with the artists that we're working with and, and as we get better search engine ranking and all that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, that's kind of, I, I think, one of the key advantages for you to think about when you're, you're considering showing on an online gallery is that they'll get traffic that you simply can't get. Now, the converse of that, obviously, is that traffic is divided in many different ways. So it's... Um, you know, I, I think you're right, Barney, in saying that, yeah, it would make sense to focus on a few where you're going to put a lot of effort into it, but I could make the argument that it would also make sense to spend some time just putting your artwork out in as many places as possible. Maybe mm -hmm. you're going to just put some on a website and not go back there for some time. Um, right. You're just going to have it sit there, but that's another page out there for you in that net that you've cast that potentially you get someone to come across and, and make a purchase. I, I can I as with many things that you and I discuss, there's there's two sides of the coin, and sometimes we find ourselves agreeing on both sides of the coin, and yeah. it's not that we're talking about walking around and around the coin. <laughs> um, I, I brought up the point about uh, promotion because I had a, a talk with uh, uh, Sean Brohire, who's the uh, owner and founder of Fine Art America, and asked him, you what kind of uh, income are your highest earners making? He said, I have some people who are doing over $10,000 a month on Fine Art America, and I asked him what distinguishes what they're doing from people who aren't getting anywhere near that, and, and it was to him it was simple. They were, they were driving traffic to their site on Fine Art America. Now, that's a that's a an enormous site. You're they're getting four or five million page views a month or visitors a month. It's and I think there's up to some something like a hundred and eighty thousand artists. So uh, it's it's you know it dwarfs what you're doing, which is substantial in itself. So maybe there maybe there's some uh, some scale that you need to look at if you're going to be on one of these huge sites you possibly do need to do more traffic than one one that is more um, I wouldn't necessarily call yours boutique but it is definitely smaller than a sure. you know a site that has uh, hundreds of thousands of artists on them and and millions of page views and visitors it's um, you really get lost in the in in the uh, way things are done and, and there could be some other differences with fine art america too it is a for those who aren't aware it's one of the premier print-on-demand sites. You can upload your art, and um, your visitors can then choose to have it. It's all print reproduction, so your visitors can choose what substrate they want. Typical uh, paper, canvas. I think they're offering some, maybe even metal and possibly glass. Now I'm not sure all the substrates. And then you can choose framing too, and it's one-stop shopping. So it's a really you know it's a great service for artists uh, they can sell their work choose their own price and get get paid for it but the downside of, of that is if you really want it to be successful you've got to carry your own water at least to an extent with them if you want the success that the greatest potential that could come out of out of working with a site like that and, and that, that could be different saying I'm in fine art America anybody who knows the business goes Ho hum. So is everybody else. Um, that's not the same thing when I say I'm in Xanadu Gallery. There's a little cachet that goes with that, or I'm in Saatchi Online. 
even if there wasn't a juried effect, you're in something that carries a little more heft to it in terms of um, the physical space, maybe, um, that, that a site like Fine Art America lacks. Yeah, it's um, so. In in other words, it's uh, you know we're we're all in that phase of of figuring out what works, and I think what's going to work for artist A probably won't work for artist B, and vice versa. It's it's you've got to find you know if you're going to do some online gallery marketing, um, it's going to take some experimentation. I don't think that there are going to be any easy answers, and I think that it would be wise. Um, to to make a, a marketing plan. Here's here's what I have to budget in terms of time. How much effort I'm willing to put into my online gallery marketing um, strategy. Here's how much uh, money I'm willing to invest in it. Um, you know, if I'm I'm going to try some uh, some of the galleries that do have a fee, maybe it's worth that fee. Maybe they do generate more traffic for you because they they have that uh, you know that commitment that financial commitment from you. So. Uh, just just kind of figure out and start playing with it and and um, y- you know that's that's certainly what we have done uh, with our online marketing efforts is just just keep working around until you find what works I, I do think that I would say that um, selling in online galleries you shouldn't be looking at it as okay I'm gonna put everything into this and I've got to count on it to, to provide an income and food for me over the course of the next two months because that's not going to happen. I, I think that uh, y- you've got to take a long-term view of it and, um, you, you know, be willing to put in some effort and, and some investment before you can expect to see any kind of results. As you mentioned that, you know, choosing your the way you're going to do it and how artist A and artist B will be different, it reminds me of my day selling advertising for Decor Magazine where I was selling to art print publishers, frame shops, people who wanted to get their work into art galleries and in the picture frame shops, whatever their business model might be. And with artists especially, it used to drive me crazy. I would, and you mentioned earlier that you think you should spread your net as far as you can, and I was always in a total believer of that, that you should advertise, you should be in trade shows, you should do direct mail marketing, um, you should take advantage of the publicity columns in the magazine, and you know, I could give them 10 or 15 different ways that they could get their work out there and, and I would be excited about trying to promote them to do it. And it wasn't all just selling to them, it was just trying to kick them in the butt to get them to do everything they could. And I ran into a lot of resistance to the point where I would make the suggestions and then quit the debate when I realized I'm not getting anywhere. So I always tried, but I didn't just keep beating my head against the wall. And what I found was there were so many people who were doing just like some would do only trade shows, which you don't want to advertise. You want you don't want to do direct mail marketing to get people to trade show. No, and in spite of that, they were successful. I think maybe because they focused so tightly on one thing, they just put all their eggs in in one small area and may, kind of were determined to make that happen. No it worked what. because it had to work. Yeah. And I had the opposite, where people only advertised. I couldn't drag them to a trade show to save my life. I don't get that. You could come to a trade show and maybe do ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars in business in one weekend at a decor expo show in Atlanta or New York. Why wouldn't you want to do that? Well, I don't want to travel. I don't like to fly, or I just don't like trade shows, or you know, a million reasons why they wouldn't want to do it. And it didn't matter. Their their business th- thrived without them taking all my advice and using every very available avenue. So I, I was thinking when you were saying that, that there are artists who could probably focus on one of these online sites and say, I'm planting my flag here on eBay or Fine Art America or Xandu Gallery or whatever it is, and make it work because they were purely determined that this is where I am going to derive all my income online from this one site. So. When we're doling out advice, keep in mind that there's plenty of other ways to do things besides um, the golden ideas that we toss out at you. I, sure. I still think I'm right, though. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, everything that we're talking about just adds to your overall knowledge. Ultimately, you have to make your own decisions. You know, you're the one that uh, is going to be making your own investment and, and, and putting the time into everything. So, um, you know. 
take everything, test it, and and find what uh, what works for you. Uh, should we dive into some questions, Marty? I know we've got a lot of uh, yeah, sure. discussion, and that um, may spark off some other. I've got one from uh, from Peggy Sturmer Cox, and she says, "I'm curious about what to look for in a good online gallery. Who is it benefiting? Artists, galleries, both." Boy, and you know, from a, an artist perspective, if it's not benefiting you, there's no point. Um, you know, you, you ultimately, you know, we talk about budgeting your time and your effort and your energy, but you've also got to have the goal that, well, I've got to ultimately be, see this moving in a direction of generating sales for me. Um, you know, if, if or, or at least generating uh, traffic to my website or whatever it is that your ultimate goal is, um, you know, if it's not benefiting you, then then it's time to find a venue where it where it will. Now, obviously, that that online gallery isn't going to be in business if it's not benefiting them, but um, but it's definitely got to be a partnership between both you and the uh, the online gallery. And um, you know, the gallery is going to get out of it as much as they're putting it into it. The more effort that they're putting into promoting and selling your work, the more um, they're going to expect out of any any uh, benefits from that. Higher percentages on sales, um, you know, fees for showing your work, etc. So, you know, there's got to be a balance there. Your your instincts are almost always going to be right. If you if you think that you're getting a raw deal, you probably are. And you even if you're not, you may not be able to shake it and in this world, there's so many different ways that you can approach it that you don't really need to be stuck with any one gallery. There's there's no there's no single gallery out there that will harm your career because you weren't in them. So use your own gut level instinct that lets you know, tells you. And then if you're still not sure, check around with with the, some of your artist friends. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's advice that I would apply to uh, both online galleries and real-world galleries. Yeah, as, right. Or you just know, who you do business with in life. Who you do business general. with, or or talk, go onto the website and look up a couple of the artists who are showing there and contact them and ask them. You know, has uh, has such and such gallery been beneficial to you? Has it been worth uh, the uh, the time and, and investment that you've spent there? Yeah. Do they pay on time or? Whatever you, in some cases, you can probably do reviews. Although I'm a little skeptical of online reviews because I think, you know, if you have a, a gallery that has thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of artists, without a doubt, you're going to have some that just feel like they got screwed, and there's no way that you can convince them otherwise. They just got themselves sideways with the policy or something, and they decided to go online and rant about it and if you if you feed into that kind of drama from one person or even a handful of people and you don't look at the large pool of people where this is coming from you can get your um, you can get your you can be influenced negatively to not work with a company that uh, because you saw a few negative reviews um, so when you do that kind of a research Look at it with a, a scant eye and step back and realize, un unless you see a repeated long-term pattern, then that would be a clue to move away. But just because some pe some people are complaining about some business doesn't mean that that's not a, a good potentially good fit for you. And vice versa, you know, just because a few people are saying, "Hey, this is awesome," you know, I've made tens of thousands of dollars, etc. You know, uh, there are going to be outliers on either end of that. Uh, that's aspect. that's true. You could have shills out there uh, um, promoting it the other way, just as just as just as likely. So, um, I I see a question there from Barbara Lipkin. She says, "I definitely been wanting to know more about how this works. I have an Etsy store, but it seems like it's more for crafts than fine arts. Or am I missing something?" Um, short answer is no, I don't think you're missing something. I think you're pretty well right that the the price of most of the work on Etsy would not be even a, a fraction of what the, you would find work for sale on Xanadu Gallery or in a, in a uh, brick and mortar gallery probably of any site. Does that mean you shouldn't be there? Not at all. If your price points fit in with what the typical price point? I'm guessing it's probably 50, not more than 100 bucks on most things that sell on Etsy, because that's the kind of buyer that they're attracting in general. 
then great. You know, I, I wrote an, a blog post about a couple. I think they're no longer a couple. The, the artist was Ashley G, and she and her then live-in boyfriend, Drew, had a site called Ashley, Dree, Ashley G and Drew, uh, which may still be around, but they were featured in Inc. magazine in a story about doing what you, you know, live, making money doing what you love, and that story referred to them as making $100,000 a year selling uh, reproductions of her prints on Etsy. Somebody ran the numbers for me and said that's an awful lot of prints and awful lot of shipping and, you know, was somewhat skeptical about it, but even if you made half that much money on Etsy, for many artists that would be a nice chunk of income for them to have, so um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't look down at what you're doing with Etsy, but I would tell you to you know keep looking elsewhere, especially if you have price points that will hold up in other galleries. Uh, Cindy Johnston asks, should you show the same art on multiple galleries, or you should should you keep the inventory separate? We kind of touched on that a little bit earlier on in the discussion. Um, as a gallery owner and and someone who has an online gallery. Uh, my advice would be to not worry too much about that. I would just show your all of your inventory in as many places as possible. You know, like say that's, and that's what I tell artists who are considering showing in our our online gallery. They'll they'll ask me, you know, if I show it with you, does that preclude me from showing it in other galleries? And I say, not at all. I mean, that's the beauty of a uh, an online gallery is that uh, the inventory requirements are are not nearly as as stringent. Um, you know. If you're showing my physical gallery, I have to have the piece here, and then obviously you're going to not not be able to show it elsewhere. But um, but if you're showing in multiple online galleries and you sell it in one of them, you can just remove it from all the other ones. So you know, obviously you'd want to check the terms of service of any particular uh, online gallery. Maybe some of them are asking to be exclusive, but I think you'll find that most are not. Good point. Did you see the one from Gregory Peters? Uh, hit me with it. <laughs> Having tried eight different online galleries with little success, I'd be interested to know if they are in as effective as they appear. FAA, Fine Art America, gets a few nibbles from time to time, but the rest are virtually worthless. Too many artists, too little promo by these galleries. Even Xanadu's virtually, virtual gallery has had no response I've seen in over a year. Granted, you must do your own promo. Good to know you agree with that. But the market seems to be swinging art and artists, so I wonder if these online galleries help anyone at all. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I think that's a very fair question. And um, you know, again, I, I think you'd have to look at okay, what what are the trade-offs? How much time and effort am I putting into it versus what the potential is? Um, and, and it is a little bit of a, a numbers game, and I can certainly speak for my gallery. I think if you asked a lot of the artists who are showing in my online gallery, um, they'd say, well, maybe it's driving some traffic to my website. I haven't seen any sales. But I'm getting an increasing number of sales through the online gallery, and granted, it's only going to be for, you know, if I have several thousand artists showing in the in the online gallery, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm selling, you know, a number of pieces, whatever that number is per month, say, uh, for example, over the last month, I think we've sold seven or eight pieces online. Well, boy, seven or eight pieces against several thousand artists, you know, the vast majority of those artists didn't sell anything, and, and as as he mentioned, maybe over the year he hasn't sold anything, uh, but for those, you know, for those artists who did sell something, was it worth it for them? Absolutely. Um, so it's it's just kind of a process of saying, well, you know, how much did I put into it? Should I should I continue to 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 pursue those efforts, or or should I would my time and effort be better spent elsewhere? Um, here's something else to consider. And Gregory, I haven't seen your art, so this is no reflection on on your work whatsoever. But um, some art sells better than others. Some artists have a knack for being able to create work that has a resonance with buyers that other artists just quite don't get as well. There was a blog post I published, a guest post from uh, Dick Harrison, a good friend of mine, 82 years old. He and I are writing a book called um, How to Sell Art to Interior Designers. It'll be out in a month or so. 
Um, he was an art rep for 20 years, and he wrote about something called Just Noticeable Difference, uh, JND, and it's a, uh, it was very interesting, but it, sometimes just noticeable difference is some little quality that you may be missing. It, not, it may be that your subject matter is great, it may be that your palette is great, but it might just be something maybe the maybe the colors aren't just exactly right or maybe the subject matter is slightly off or I it's not necessarily you it's not easily discernible um, but that is something that you need to consider if you're if you're everywhere and you're doing a lot of promotion and you're not getting any sales anywhere maybe you need to you know look inward a little bit and say Am, am I having success in other areas that would substantiate that it's just an online thing or is do I need to make some you know modifications to the kind of art I'm, I'm making it might be that what you like to make isn't this art that sells the best um, yeah and um, I mean I agree with that to a degree I think that you could drive yourself crazy trying to figure out figure out what that <laughs> is um, and, and to a certain extent um, you know sometimes it is just a matter of being in the right place at the right time um, but I, I definitely do agree with what you're saying, though, that um, you know you want to be ever improving what you're creating. You want to be aware of what's going on in the marketplace. Um, at the end of the day, though, you want to be producing work that you're 100% proud of, that that uh, you know you're you're kind of living up to your own standards. And maybe it's also a matter of you just simply haven't found the right venue yet, and you need to go out and, and keep looking for that that venue that's going to click with the work that you're you're creating whether it's online or or in the physical world that uh, the the context of the 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 uh, you know the other work that's showing in that venue it fits in with your work and attracts the right kind of buyers so it's uh, I think we're probably generating more questions than answers when it comes to to that but um, but it, it's it, if it were easy, if there were an easy answer, we'd all be gazillionaires, right? And and the process is you just got to keep working and working until you you find the the path. We know there is a path out there because there are some very successful artists uh, selling online, um, and so it's 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 a process of figuring out what the right formula is for you and for your work. To to that extent, if if you can do some research beyond just what's going. You know which galleries are doing what, um, and what their deals are, and how, how they're promoting. If you can find, and this may not be easy to ascertain, but if you can find artists who are successful online, it would be in your best interest to look at their career, look at their business model, look at their the way they, you know, the the everything about what they do, and try to creatively borrow the, the parts of what they're doing that appear to add to their success and add it to what you're doing. Maybe it's their follow-up. Uh, who knows? It's uh, You're right, Jason. We could just uh, uh, turn this into a who knows category if we keep going down that, um, that path. So... Uh, Tony uh, Delisa asked the question: How do brick and mortar galleries feel when one of their artists begins to also sell online? Is there a conflict, um, and how does one price the work online and stay in line with other galleries? Um, and we touched on that that last question, and that is that, boy, in, in this day and age, you've really got to be consistent in your pricing. Um, it, you know, especially in online galleries where. If I have someone in my in my gallery space looking at your work and they pull out their phone and look you up and here you are in an online gallery at a much lower price, that's you know that's kind of the 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 end of the relationship in all likelihood. And so you just want to be very careful about that, um, you know, maintaining that consistency. And to a certain extent, you know, I, I think artists sometimes tend to think about this backward. They think that. Well, if I'm showing in a physical gallery, I can be at one price because they are more prestigious and have higher costs, et cetera, et cetera. And I can show in an online gallery and be at a lower price because I'm making a higher commission um, and and they don't sell to it. I think instead of doing all that, you've got to think, okay, I'm going to have a consistent price and that is going to a certain extent is going to determine the venues where I show my work. Um, you know, if, 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 I'm at a higher price point that precludes me from showing in a certain festival or online gallery. 
so be it. I've got to maintain that price to be consistent, and I'm just not going to show in those those venues anymore. It's, now, in terms, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm, I just want to say it's integrity. It's it's two things. It's integrity and quit being stupid and 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 cutting your pay. If you lower your price on one venue from another, you just cut your pay. It's hard enough to make a living without you doing stupid things like taking money away from yourself. Next time you next time you cut your your price for something where it's priced somewhere else, please stick a twenty dollar bill in the envelope to me and just mail it off because that's it's probably worse than that, but that's the equivalent of just taking money right out of your wallet and throwing it away. Now, the other part of Tony's questions was how are brick and mortar galleries going to feel about it? Now, that's a little bit more of a challenge. Um, I, I think that uh, more and more uh, physical galleries are, are realizing that we live in a changed world. Some of them are still fighting, you know, kicking and screaming. You know, I want to be your exclusive representative. I don't want you showing, you know, they may not even want you having your own website, let alone showing an online gallery. Well, that's, that's really old school. And, and it it is. still happens, right? Oh, certainly. And, you know, I think an artist who is in that situation where the gallery is asking for that kind of exclusivity um, would have to really weigh in the balance, well, is this gallery, is it worth it? Are they providing enough sales and promotion and marketing of my work um, to to where I'm willing to give up my other my other avenues of sales? But I think that uh, the future of the business is, is simply that artists need to be showing in as many venues as possible. I think galleries are going to going to come around to this view and and hopefully we can all figure out a new model going forward as, you know, certainly as a gallery I'm looking for new venues and new ways to to put my art uh, out in front of people and and I I don't begrudge artists who need to do that as well. So, it's just finding that that balance, that partnership and you know, being open, have a, an open conversation with the galleries that you're showing with and find out what their preferences are and um, you know, let them know I'm not trying to undercut you in any way, and obviously I don't want to step on your toes, but at the same time, this could be beneficial for all of us. If I'm showing in an online gallery and that creates a new collector for me, that collector potentially could come to my show at your gallery, could buy artwork from you um, that otherwise would not have been sold if I had never come across that, that collector. And I can tell you, in my experience with the artists that I work with, I've had that happen on numerous occasions. Um, so... You know, I, I, I hope, I, I like to think that we're a little bit more progressive in that way, but I, I also like to think that other galleries um, will, will come around to that same kind of perspective. Or they'll be extinct. Um, in, I've dealt with you now for a number of years on all kinds of different ways, and you've always impressed me by the fact that you're open-minded and that you accept the world is changing and you adapt to it rather than fight it. And the other part about what you do, that I think anybody who works with you, any of your artists who work with you, is you're fair. And, you know, if you can find that in, in those qualities in other gallery owners, you're going to be very happy with the result. And you should look for that kind of a situation. And just building on what else you said, we're, we're in this wonderful world of technology where you can unleash the extremely powerful marketing tools to help yourself with email marketing. We've talked about most of these things in previous broadcasts, like like blogging, like email marketing, um, e-commerce on your own website, and you can bring those things to bear on relationships with galleries. If, if you have an opening for a, an artist in your gallery, Jason, and that artist has got a mailing list of 500 or 1,000 people's, people's, people, <laughs> or names, you're going to be extremely happy to have them throw that, promote that list to get them to that opening. It's going to be a mutually beneficial thing, and that's that's what you're in. That's what you're doing now with your galleries, and I think that's what artists need to seek to find these kind of relationships that are where everybody's got, getting something out of it, and every, there's a there's a respect for what's going on, so that. Um, you feel good about being in a relationship, a business relationship with somebody, and that you want to do those things rather than hold back. Yeah. 
Uh, Robin Pedrero asks, one of the aspects of being in uh, Fine Art America and a few of the other print-on-demands that she finds unfavorable is that the collector's contact information is not provided. The relationship building mailing list with the collector is not there. How do online galleries nurture that relationship? And I, I that's a very valid point and um, you, you know, it's, it, it is de definitely one of the trade-offs that you have to consider is that any of those sales that happen you're one step removed. In essence, the uh, the, the service provider, the, the print on demand provider, is your customer. Um, you know, you're the, you're selling to them; they're selling to the their customer. So, um, you are definitely not going to have the same kind of relationship. Um, but on the other hand, if it's sales that you weren't going to make anyway, um, y you know, it's it, it could be worth the the trade off there. And um, you know, you can also always hope that. Uh, your name recognition is at least growing and maybe that buyer who saw your work on Fine Art America and bought it is going to then go to your website and sign up for your mailing list. So I'm not sure if there are any ways that you could nurture that, um, but... Uh, well, you but, can do but, some things on Fine Art America, for instance. Uh, they have a blog. You can post blog posts on, on Fine Art America. Um, so if, if you're going to be have a presence on Fine Art America, Use, uh, they're one of those sites, and I haven't, I haven't gotten into all of them. Uh, we'll give you a link to, uh, before we get done here, a website where you can look up 250 places to sell your art online. That'll keep you busy for a little while. Uh, but if you go, I, when I look at the tools that Fine Art America offers, one of them is a blog, so, and they also have an event calendar. Um, if you're not taking advantage of those things, you're just missing easy opportunities to get your name out there. If you're having an opening, if you're having a studio show or doing anything, get take advantage of their event calendar and just put sharp blog posts out there. That's another way that people can find you on Fine Art of America online or fineartofamerica.com, pardon me, and, and connect with you directly. So I, I understand you'd like to have those names, but it's not going to happen. Um, I, it, it's just... It's not the way of the world. Even with you and your your gallery, right? Sure. Your physical gallery, you're not sharing mailing lists with artists. Yeah, you just have to hope that those galleries have a good follow up system in place, a good marketing system in place. Um, you know, as as we know in our in my gallery, our we are far more likely to make a sale to someone who's already bought your work, and hopefully the online gallery understands that as well and is promoting your work then to people who've who've already bought a piece. Um, good point. Do you want to carry on with the one? There was something else here on prints, um, or do you have another question you want to jump into? Um, I've got another one from Patricia Pope, and uh, I think that this would be one that a lot of people would ask, and that is, how do you protect your artworks from someone borrowing your idea? Um, and we've, I think we've touched on this in some previous broadcasts, kind of the risks of putting your work out there in the social media world, online, and certainly would apply in online galleries. Uh, and that is that you really can't, you can't protect the idea um, and, and promote the work at the same time. You've got to have, uh, you got to have your work out there for people to be able to see it and potentially buy it, and that's going to expose you to the possibility of other artists appropriating or or being inspired by your ideas, um, and. I mean, that's just, that That also is the way of the world, um, you know, that happens in every other business. Apple invents an iPhone and all of a sudden every other manufacturer out there starts uh, creating uh, smartphones. Um, so I, I think that the, the only real solution to that is that you've got to stay ahead of the curve. You've got to be constantly creating the highest quality work that you can and, and incorporating your own vision and perspective and voice um, so that, you're creating something that even if they can take the idea, they can't execute it the same way that you would, and um, and, and you know you, you go from there. Keep reinventing yourself. Make new iterations off the thematic thing that you've done, so that where somebody is copying you, it looks like it's dated because they they're doing something that's somewhat passe because you've moved on. You don't want to keep paint, you don't want to keep painting or creating the same thing over and over again. But you can stay on, stay in a style or a genre and and build on what you're doing. And I think that's one of the things that artists who are successful, who do get knocked off, 
don't worry about it because I, I put these other people in my rear view mirror. And you know, if it if it comes down to it, you can start pursuing things legally. I strongly recommend it in almost all cases. The the people who get the, do the most benefit from that are the lawyers. And you're you'll just get sucked into so much negativity. It's hardly ever worth it. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely agree with uh, with that one. That's just you know you could register your copyright and protect your copyright, but um, at the end of the day, that's that's all focusing on the negative, and and far better to be focused on creating the very best work that uh, that you can. What do you uh, think about that one on shipping there from Mark uh, or from Charlotte Metz? I haven't seen it yet. Hit me. Okay. I assume that I would be responsible for shipping anything uh, I sell online. What happens if I'm out of town, perhaps if without internet access to learn when something has sold or if I can't get to my studio promptly to prepare the piece for shipment? You take long vacations. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, and I can speak to this from our experience, um, you know, because we've certainly had uh, situations similar to what she's talking about where a client has bought something and then it's taken some time for us to get together with the artist. and. Um, what I found is that clients understand, um, you know, they, they're buying something online. We simply let them know what's happening. We contacted the artist or we put a phone call into the artist. We're waiting to hear back from them. Um, I have requested on my website that the artists give me both their studio, their home, and their, their mobile phone number so that we have as many ways as possible to get in touch with them. But, um, you know, a, a client will understand if I tell them the artist is in Peru for a couple of weeks you know, she'll ship it to you when she gets back. I've I've never really had a client upset by that. So, um, you know, yes, you will be responsible for the shipping if you're selling through my online gallery, but we'll work with you to to make sure that it it goes smoothly. If you if you're really going to be out of town, and not have any internet access, get somebody to monitor your email for you while you're gone, or at least set up an auto reply. I'm not a big fan of auto replies because it's an advertisement to hey, I'm not home. Um, but there are ways around that. Finding somebody who you trust to just read your email and, and, and give them a quick response, here's all you need to say. The artist will be back on this date and the, and the artwork work will be shipped within 72 hours of that time. Something to that effect. Uh, David Friedman asked the question, are intelligent, sophisticated art buyers going to these online markets? I, I don't know if I sense a note of skepticism there, but um, it's rightful. Um, you know, certainly, um, as I say, we're in the early phases of the online art market, and certainly in the very early phases, there was a real reticence among buyers, especially sophisticated buyers, to, uh, you know, make purchases online because it was difficult to, first of all, it was difficult to see the artwork well. Um, that high resolution has made that easier and easier. Um, second of all, it was hard to have a lot of trust in, you know, you're, make, you're having a transaction with someone who you don't know, you don't know if you can trust them, and, and if it's a high dollar amount, you're going to be reluctant to do that. What we've seen over time, though, is that as people become more and more comfortable buying online, um, you know, and buying a wide range of products from jewelry to luxury cars to yachts to, you know, anything else, that that's also um, spilling over into the art world and that, yes, people are willing to spend more money on uh, online purchases of art. Um, you know, we have had, uh, and, and let me just qualify that by saying that actually the majority of our online purchases are at a lower dollar amount than the average sale price of artwork that's selling out of my gallery. You know, there definitely, that still exists, the the uh, the issue of, of making an online purchase, but we have made... 8,000, 10,000. Uh, last spring we had a 12, $12,500 sale online. Um, and I'd have to say that someone who's spending at that level is probably pretty sophisticated and pretty intelligent and is buying online. <laughs> so it's it's definitely happening, and I, I believe that it's going to be happening more and more. Well, let me, let me put it in perspective of a different business. The largest seller of diamonds in the world is a company called Costco. People are buying diamonds on Costco. A, a year or so ago, they had a million-dollar ring on sale there. Um, so there are sophisticated buyers who are spending big bucks on luxury items 
and they are buying them online. Don't let don't let the thought that um, um, there are, your buyers aren't there deter you because you would be doing yourself a disservice if you did. Well, I um, uh, again, this is a subject that we could probably go on and on about, but I we, we've kind of come toward the end of our time. But I just want to kind of uh, maybe between the the two of us as we wrap this up, we could kind of come to a consensus since we've gone around in a couple of different circles. And I would say. From my perspective as a gallery owner and as someone who works with a lot of artists um, and, and sees firsthand you know, the challenges that those artists face and, and what they're doing that's working, um, I would say that my advice to an artist would be, yes, it is worth putting some effort into showing your work in online galleries, A. Um, B, I would say that uh, you should be budgeting your time and effort, and and you know not you don't want to put everything into it. You don't want to spend all your time. You don't want to let it pull you away from the studio. But it is worth some effort there. Um, and I guess C, I would say that it it to me it makes sense to cast as wide a net as as possible. Um, you know, my online gallery is there's no cost involved other than your time, and and I understand that is a real cost. But um, it's fairly easy for you to set up a page on our website to upload images. Um, there's no ongoing cost involved. We only take a 20% commission on work uh, on work that sells through the website. So, um, you know, other than that small investment of time, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense for you to put that small amount of effort into to putting the work on our website. And I think you could extend that out into the other online galleries to help you cast that that wider net. So that's that's my advice, and I'm sticking to it. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't argue any of those points. We looked at different sides of other um, issues with this, and there always will be debates on a lot of things circling around the art business. the The future of the online gallery is great, in my opinion. It's only going to get better. Will it have some ups and downs? Yes. Will companies like Amazon and Google be able to make a dent like they have in other markets? I Who think. If they if if they are determined enough, they will. You know, you could have told me um, that there was going to be an online shoe market that's selling over a billion dollars a year in shoes, and I would have thought that's crazy. I I have to try my shoes on, but Zappos proved us different on that. So just keep your eye on it. I would at least keep your finger in it. I would tell you to even do more than that. It's, devote a certain amount of your time to it. Maybe you budget that time so that you don't overdo it, but keep keep looking at it, keep searching, keep using it. Eventually it's going to come into focus for you and be something that will be very successful. Um, I promised you that I would tell you the link to that site with 100, well it's actually 250 places. It started off as 125 in uh, Carolyn Edlin who's a, just a great art marketer and pretty darn good artist herself, has a, a site called artsyshark.com. And rather than have you try to spell that, I did a URL sharpener. Just write this down, x.co forward slash 125, the numbers, 125 places. x.co slash 125 places. That'll take you to her blog post where she's now listed 250 places where you can get your art uh, listed online, including Xanadu Gallery. Arnie, I, oh, I muted myself there for a second so you wouldn't hear me <laughs> typing, but I just uh, posted that link onto the, uh, the Google Hangout page as well, so you can okay. see it there if you didn't get a chance to write that down. So, Although I see when I posted it, it didn't... Oh, yeah, it did make it a link, so there you go. Um, great. Well, I want to um, thank you, Barney, for another great broadcast, and I'd like to thank everyone who uh, participated online. Great questions, and, and uh, you know, your, your conversation gives us uh, things to think about, and your input gives us things to talk about, so it's all, all uh, very good, and we enjoy mm -hmm. these broadcasts. We'll uh, be back here in exactly one month's time. The second Tuesday of every month is when we try and do these broadcasts. So It's a date. It's a date. Uh, anything else you wanted to mention, Barney, before we uh, sign off? No, I think I'm good to go. I, 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 I'm with you in terms of uh, the gratitude. I know it's an hour out of your time, 
to listen to us, whether it's live right now or you're watching it on YouTube later on. We appreciate that you have a continued interest in what we're trying to do, and I'm grateful for your participation, and I'm grateful for um, Jason, everything that you do for artists. So I well, guess I'll I'm in a grateful it. mood today. I, I will ditto that. Um, you know, I it's it's been really gratifying to to have this this conversation with the the broader art market out there and, and with artists from all over the country and I feel like it's it's uh, hopefully uh, you and I Barney have been able to give something back to that community but I feel like I've definitely been been enriched by hearing from artists and hearing what their concerns and questions are and um, you know it's helped me build a better business I, I feel like I'm better able to, to sell artwork to my collectors because I have a better understanding of, of the art market from having worked with all of you. So uh, we definitely appreciate your uh, input and your participation, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the next broadcast. Uh, see, see you, you then. Time. Thanks, Peace Barney. Out. You're welcome. Talk to you later.